You're watching LMCC, your community TV. Welcome to The Pulse, I'm Jennifer Ray, and today, super fun place, we're here at Sojourn in Mound, and I have Sally Hebson, who was the founder, and still with it after, what year did we start? 1984, that'd be 34 years. 34 years. Yeah. So she has, from a vision to creating what it is today, is really nothing less than amazing. So Thank congratulations you. Thank on you that. Thank you for that, Jen. And I want to hit right off the top what the mission is. Together, we establish partnerships and supports to fulfill an active and healthy life. So what exactly do we do here at Sojourn? Well, when people come, they come to have a good time. So we say, how was your day? And they say, it was great. So we decided that our motto would be and our vision would be, we, together we make great days because that's we want to make sure everybody has a really good day because otherwise, why would you get up and come and go out and have fun? We want to make sure it's really good. So that's what we do. Well, that's fabulous. And how did this idea come to fruition? Well, I've been known as the know-it-all nurse. I grew up in Excelsior, and I was in the middle of five kids. My dad had a law practice on the main street, and my parents kind of helped everybody in town take care of whatever they needed, and so we all kind of grew up to do that. So I went to the St. Catharines University. It used to be the College of St. Catharines studied nursing and another friend and I decided we would like to do something that would be a place for people to be who didn't have a place to be. And that was the people in Excelsior who perhaps could no longer go to the library because of a little memory loss. They might not be able to go to the social club because of a stroke. Something kept them from being where they wanted to be. So we decided we would come up with this idea of having a place where people could be. So. To that end, we sat at her kitchen table like women do with little kids, and our kids were playing at our feet, and we came up with this idea. We rented some space from the Minnetonka School District through the community education. That was at the, what is currently the West Junior High School. And we had one person a half a day a week on Tuesdays. That was my neighbor, Maud Johnson, in Excelsior. And that was the very beginning in 1984, and it's grown and grown and grown since. So now we have license for 50 people, and we moved many times in the meantime. Spent 15 years on the campus of Presbyterian Homes. We've been here in Mound for the last seven years in this building, and it's a good place for us to be. Hopefully we'll stay here. Well, it is a great place, and what I particularly liked was the really bright yellow. It's a nice color, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it? it is. It's, it's very cheery. It, yeah, it's very, very cheery. So we started that, and then we are up to 150 people that you serve. That's it, right. We, well, we went into people needed a place to be when they couldn't be at home any longer. So then we said, well, where are you going to go? Go to a nursing home? A lot of people didn't want to. So then we decided maybe we'd get a house and have some people live in the house and get it licensed by the state for monies and services. And we did that. And then we did another one and another one. And now we have nine houses around the western suburbs from Deep Haven to St. Bonifacius and Waconia. So those houses house about 52 people. And those people get up and come to the day center. And some go out and volunteer, and some go out and have jobs. And they're all under our care. And it's called Housing with Services Assisted Living in the state of Minnesota. And the age range? The age range is out? really pretty big. It's from 27-year-old Alex to 97-year-old Effie. Isn't that wonderful? It is. They all get along well, except when they don't. And then they do. <laughs> Just like a real family in a real life. It, that's such an understatement, and it's a very cute understatement. Now, it was really fun when I walked through to get to this room where we're doing the interview oh, good. because we've got people, you know, just doing all sorts of different things from playing, 
you know, a board game type thing to cards, to music, to colors, right. to, I mean, everyone is just so engaged. Right. Uh, it, it was really wonderful. I've We're never been glad. here before, so it was really awesome. I'm glad you saw that. That's what we try to do, is try to make sure everybody can do exactly what pleases them. Yeah. Within reason, of course. So now, a place like this doesn't run on air. Right, exactly. So how, how do we keep it funded? Well, we keep it funded in many ways. People who have private funds can pay privately. People who don't, we can refer them to the state of Minnesota to what's called a waiver that goes through medical assistance. And it's a very cumbersome process that we work well. We have a social worker and three registered nurses and a very recreational therapy staff that can do all the music and games and all the fun as well as the funding. I know that sometimes the city and county, is that where we're getting the funds from the county, well, is the waivers? The or is waiver. there additional like grants that you write to get funding? Well, we used to be private nonprofit, but then our accountant said one day, you're not getting very much money donated, why don't you be for profit? So we decided to change to for profit, and that is, I think that's made a difference in that we can raise money in different ways. But the money pretty much comes from the state of Minnesota and it's funneled down through the counties. And that's, those are called wavered products. So it funds everybody from 27-year-old Alex to 97-year-old Evie and everybody in between. Right, if they fit the criteria. If they fit the those, criteria. For those waivers. Right. So is there um, like holiday parties that are coming up, oh, I would assume? Oh, yes, we have everything great. We have all kinds of holiday parties. We're having a big Christmas show, which you'll see practicing. And we have um, all kinds of individual things. We try to bring in diversity. We have a lot of employees who are from other countries, primarily Africa. And so we do Kwanzaa and Hanukkah and Christmas celebrations, along with all the ordinary things like cookies and decorating in Santa Claus and sure. Christmas shopping and all the rest of it. Sure. And is there anything that we want to let the community know special about Sojourn that we haven't already covered? Because if they want to partake in this, let's say they have a family member, yes. how do they get a hold of you or the intake person or the social worker or who do they actually contact? Great, great question. I would say call 1-800-SOJOURN. The reason we chose the name Sojourn, it means a temporary place to stay. So that's what this is. You come and stay for as long as you need to. Some people graduate from our care and go on to a different kind of life, and some people stay with us for their entire lives. So we try to make it work for everybody. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Sally, it's been a pleasure. Lovely to meet you as well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the program and letting us come here and see all the magic that you're making for the community. Thank you for your kind words. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm here with Patty Caroline, and she is one of the fabulous people that we have attending here. And so, Patty, first I want to welcome you to the program. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. And can you give us a, an idea of what brought you to Sojourn, how that was chosen, and what Sojourn has meant to you in your life? Well, I had a very dear social worker, and I was living on my own uh, over eight years ago and struggling, not getting out, not able to take care of daily things and matters and stuff. And she said, I heard of this great place in Mound. Uh, she was in Minneapolis, uh, called Sojourn, and I said, well, let's check it out. And immediately when I came here, I felt like I was at home. And everybody's so friendly and wonderful here, supportive, loving, caring. I just can't say enough good things about it. And I've been out of the hospital now for over eight years. I'm bipolar, and uh, that's quite an achievement, too, because I was in and out quite often before that. So I'm really pleased with all the care that I get here and the support and the love. And um, I, I think another thing I see, some people, they come in really struggling, and I was there at one time too, but they have such a way of um, nurturing the dignity of each person, each person as a special person. And I just love that, and it's so neat to see that happen to new people that are coming right. through and see their growth and development as well. Was there any one thing that you 
um, take away from here, you know, when you look back on your eight years that you're like, this was so life changing or life affirming. Mm -hmm. Was there was there any one thing or just the whole? Well, program? I think it, it's the whole program. I I think what has helped me has been like the musical uh, arrangements and programs that we do. We also do art and we do that three days a week, sometimes four days too. And I feel really drawn to that, that that's something I need to get out and express and stuff. And just the words of encouragement of the staff, I used to keep to myself when I had a problem, when something wasn't going right. And now I feel like I can talk to a brother or sister <laughs> in Sojourn and, um, you know. And express it. Express it, yes. Instead of keeping it bottled up inside sure, and being assured. Sure, doesn't do any good, yeah. No, uh-uh. It -uh. doesn't do any right. good whatsoever. Right. Now, do you sing? You, you like the music programs. Yes. Do you sing? Do you do, you do instruments? I do. Um, I used to play the piano. We were, um, all of us played the piano. I come from a family of seven. And I've kind of gotten away from it, but I had to give my piano away when I moved here. And so my brother last year, he's my twin brother for my birthday, or our birthday, he gave me a keyboard. So, <laughs> so it fits in a nice little spot in my room right. and I, can, I have headsets and I can play anytime I want. <laughs> so it's really a lot of fun. Well, it sounds lovely. Oh, thank you, yes. And is there any other final comments that you want to add about Sojourn to the community? I think it's a place where you can really set sail and be the person you are designed to be and really make a difference in people's lives if you're part of the program. And it's done that for me and I know I can do it for others too. I don't know if there's a better mission in life than that. Oh, thank you so much. Next, we have George Linkert, who is the program director here at Sojourn. And as I had mentioned to Sally earlier when I was walking through, a lot of positive energy with all sorts of different programs going on for all the people who are here. So why don't you talk a little bit about being program director and what that involves in getting everybody to, you know, participate? Well, it's about, you know, trying to make sure that there's a variety of stuff for people to do. It's not everyone's into music. Uh, so we try to have an alternative to music, you know, when that is happening. We have an art activity where we have a, uh, I, I try to make sure that there's a game going on. Linda? Yeah? You're going to get a Yahtzee, you think? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Julia's, Julia's trying right, right now. I printed out the events calendar, calendar and first of all, I was like, oh my gosh, look at all this fun stuff. And second of all, I was really surprised to see that we have poker, we've got Texas Hold'em. Mm -hmm. I like to make up games and uh, like to... You know, all right, we're going to do some trivia along with a physical challenge, and uh, we're gonna, we divide the room up into teams, and uh, we're called, you know, like, so for Halloween, we had a witch table, we had a ghost table, and a pumpkin table, and all right, all right, witch table, you're up. No, you know, answer this question, and if they can't answer it, okay, now the ghost table can steal, you know, the point, and we have a lot of fun like that. So it takes a lot of creativity for that. Yeah, we, well, yeah, we're a really creative team, that's for sure. And you're obviously the leader of that. I also see that there's a lot of fitness. Anytime mm -hmm. fitness is every day on the calendar. We do. We take a group to Anytime Fitness every day of the week. Um, we're really, really lucky. Uh, Tim Bowers at Anytime Fitness here in Mound has just been really generous with his space. And uh, the people there are really fantastic when we come in. Um, we sometimes, some of our folks need a little help. And like, if I'm not, a, if I or whoever is taking the group there, it's not able to help. There's somebody there. Oh yeah, let me help you turn that on, or uh, let me make adjust those weights for you, or that sort of thing. It's just a really supportive thing about this community that I love. It's what we go to anytime. The other big physical activity we do every week is bowling. During the winter, we go bowling every Friday, and uh, that's and we go to Country Club Lanes in Excelsior, and uh, and they always have a couple lanes res uh, reserved for us, and uh, um, and also very welcoming and uh, accommodating to our folks who maybe have needs or that uh, need a little more attention. Most of them probably bowl better than I do. <laughs> there, you, we ha we've had, we had one guy, Colin, broke 200 points two weeks ago. Wow. I, I, don't, 
I took a picture of him and I, I took it like, which ball did he have? We're like, okay, we got to remember that ball next time you come, Colin, because it was amazing. He was, he was on fire that day. So yeah, it was some yeah. tremendous bowlers. Yeah, that's a, that's and, a very high score for But bowling. the important thing is to have fun, you know, to get out and, you know, because it, uh, you know, it's, it's the chance for them to get out of here and get out and, and, you know, take the bus ride there, enjoy the nice bus ride through by the lake and, uh, and uh, get out and have fun and be physical. And now, do you have an art director? I saw there was a lot of art on the wall mm -hmm. that I'm assuming has been made by right. the people our who come here and, and, and do the art classes. We don't have an art director. We have a couple of fantastic staff that do mostly art. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we have a group of ladies that always, that uh, will, we kind of give them their own little space to do their art activities. And they produce the most wonderful things that uh, you'll see in the walls as you walk around here. It's just amazing. And they really plan thoughtfully about what they're doing. You know, with Thanksgiving coming up and the holidays, they're starting to okay, what are, you know the, on the calendar? The, you know, you'll see which art kind of art projects they're doing: turkey and and uh, turkeys, and uh, then snowflakes and Christmas ornaments and that sort of thing. A lot of fun things. Yeah, it is, it's it's amazing. It's and like it's tremendous staff here, people here that full of love and grace that. Uh, um, give the, their clients real respect that sometimes that it's hard for them to find and uh, this is a place full of that for them. Well that's what I hear, that's the recurring theme and thread that's being woven mm -hmm. continued through every one that I've talked to here or met which is pretty awesome. Is there anything as the program director that we can reach out to the community like you said the bowling, the anytime fitness, is there anything else uh, that we maybe want to put out there in the world where there well, you know, be. I always say when, you know, and I don't think about this just with people that come here as soldiers, but just in general, I think sometimes we just got to remember to be patient with other people. You know, there's always, you know, there's people that, people, we all get upset or we all get sad or we maybe don't act the way we think maybe we should or other people don't act the way we think they should. And we just sometimes need to be patient with people. And I, I've, that's a really big lesson I've learned in my years here at Sojourn is just people, our people always deserve respect, no matter how they may be acting, and and uh, if they're acting strange, you know, they, just because they may be acting strange doesn't mean that that you get to be you should be rude to them or have some other weird, I, I don't know how to say, it. but but just to always you know, an always, unusual I, always, I, take, I, I take the I take the love and grace I've learned to to use here out there when I'm when I'm on the road and with those drivers that uh, you know <laughs> like somebody cut me off, okay. He's probably in a bigger hurry than me. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. You know, and just that's just the world we live in, and we need to we need to we need to be more compassionate to people in the world in general. Appreciation for the little things mm -hmm. and each an individual person. Right. Thank you so oh, much. Of course. You oh, have no idea pleasure. how much I appreciate all of your time Thank you. that everyone here has extended to us. It's a beautiful place, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm Jennifer Ray. Godspeed. Thanks so much for watching. And this is just a great community uh, facility. And if there's any way that you can help with time, energy, volunteers, I'm sure it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much.